I would like to welcome everyone to the 61st episode of Money Trees. I say that altruism, true altruism, is a rare characteristic to possess. If you were to combine intelligence, altruism, and blockchains, you get amazing projects like Nifty House. Nifty House's founder is one of the most recognizable voices in our space, a voice that constantly spreads good energy, education, and opportunity to all they interact with. It is my pleasure to welcome Fenn to Money Trees. How are you feeling today, Fenn? Wow, I'm feeling better after that excellent introduction. Uh, you know, I'm doing doing all right. I actually, um, you know, just got off a, a call and and now I'm have my coffee and I'm excited to talk with you today. I'm doing doing pretty well. Hey, man, good to hear. Thank you for joining us. What kind of coffee do you drink? Black coffee. <laughs> I, I, like if I if I go anywhere, I'll get like an americano, you know. But at home, I just make a, a just regular black coffee. Uh, you know, I try I try all uh, all kinds. Um, they're like sometimes like right now I'm just drinking like I'm pretty sure it's like Folgers. <laughs> uh, but you know, I actually there's a really good um, coffee company called Na- Native Ground. And they're based out of Arizona, and they're indigenous owned and operated, and um, you know everything's sourced from indigenous sources, and it's it's really good. Uh, so that that's probably one of my favorite coffees, um, you know. But I do, you know, I do try different kinds, so I'm not overly picky. I would say, you know, my coffee career started maybe two three months ago, and it came to a swift end. I have moved on to black tea. That is where I get my caffeine from. <laughs> I tried an Americano and I was I was very, very confused because I saw all the options and I'm like, okay, Americano, this has to be like the sweetest, most basic form of coffee. And it's just water in an espresso. So I love that you can drink that, but it got me. I wasn't ready for it. I needed some milk, some sugars, but I digress. I digress. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, I remember when I first saw you post the link to the Nifty House Discord and it was one of the fastest links I've ever clicked in Web3. Admittedly, you know, before I even knew what it was. I just knew with you being in charge of it, it would be something I had to pay attention to. For the unfamiliar, can you tell us exactly what Nifty House is? Absolutely. Um, so Nifty House is a Web3. So uh, <laughs> let me let me uh, let me put my hat on, my real hat on. No, um, no. Basically, we're 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 a conglomerate. I hate the word conglomerate. We're we're. I don't like to say an agency either, right? So, like, if I was just to spit it like straight, I would say we're a Web3 agency helping artists and artful brands make uh, meaningful projects. Uh, in the Web3 space. I mean, that's about as boiled down as you can get it. Uh, we're more of a collective because a lot of us that are in, in involved with Nifty House, although we operate Nifty House, we also have our other things going on. Like, we're very involved in the space. So whether we're collectors or artists or, you know, devs or whatever, you know, Nifty House is just a part of what we do. So we're we're a collective where we kind of operate as a team, but we also operate autonomously. And that's very important for Nifty House is like leveraging the, the community and the, the strength of one another, but still having our own space to do, you know, what we want to do. Because for me, Web3 is autonomy. It means having your own platform and your own space. Um, but with Nifty House, we're able to help those people fill in the gaps um, who maybe want to do something in Web3 but are missing part of the team to, to make it happen at the level that they want. Or maybe they're just scared and need someone to like help them walk across the bridge or, you know, maybe just an education or whatever it is, you know. But um, for us, like, what you know, that's what Nifty House is, is that tool to like help people feel comfortable and creating their own space but at the end of the day it's their own space you know and so uh, that's really important to us even as we build our own native projects like eventually the goal is to hand them over to the community so that we can continue to do new projects and not um, be babysitting old old projects Um, because at the end of the day like 
if the community is not involved, then there's really no point uh, in that project. Whew. I love it. You know, I think the term agency has like a bit of a negative connotation only when you think of like classic um, structures, we'll say. However, for new people, calling yourself a Web3 agency helps them understand it very quickly. And as they start to see how you operate, you'll see that it flows different than a predatory agency may. And I feel like agencies have their services, so I don't want to sound like I'm knocking them. I don't hate the word conglomerate, but I say collective is fire. So I'm glad you're rocking with that. I think that that, that suits it. If, you, if, an, if you're an artist, well, you are an artist, what I'm saying, uh, the proverbial you. If you were an artist that wanted to talk to Nifty House about getting a project off the ground, what does that look like? Yeah, that's a good question. So actually, to date, we, we more have been looking at artists that we feel aligned with what we're trying to do that, you know, um, are invested in the space, you know, invested in the opportunity and just are missing something and, and want to be involved, um, you know. But if we're open to artists of all kinds um, who are interested in this space, who want to kind of learn more, um, you know, because for, for me, um, you know, you like this space is not easy, right? It's, I know we've all seen the headlines, but, um, succeeding in this space takes work and dedication and in some ways, humility, like as an artist, uh, you may have like an entire successful persona in web two, but then you come into web three, it's a whole different market. And for most people, they have to start from the bottom and that's not easy for every artist or every brand, you know? And so if you don't have that, uh, if you're not willing to kind of start from zero, um, then, then we're probably not the right fit. Right. But, um, being able to, you know, uh, one thing that I would say is, in terms of approaching us, you know, our Discord is open, right? And it's that's where is the great, the best part place to start is to ask questions in the Discord. You know, talk about you know, like, hey, I'm an artist and I'm so curious about this space and I don't really know where to start. You know, something like that in the Discord, it will get a lot of attention from our team, and we would love to answer questions. And then, you know, as the relationship grows if there seems to be a fit there you know then i think the conversation would naturally develop um we're, we're not you know looking to just make a buck off of the next person you know we're looking for people that are truly interested in what this space offers and are willing to put in the work to make a project that's impactful um you know there's plenty of people that would just take your money um that's not what we're looking to do. We're looking for like partnerships to build uh, real, real projects that have meaningful impact. Fen, I really love the mission of Nifty House. And when I think about our first interactions, I was listening to you talk in Twitter spaces and you were so free with the knowledge, so open to helping out others that, you know, were looking for onboarding or looking for resources. And it really embodied a lot of what people say the space is about, but you don't see that frequently. You yourself are an artist. How have you been able to balance that level of care and attention that you have for others while still being able to let your own creativity flourish? That's a really good question. Um, you know, it, it took me quitting my real my day job um, because it very quickly became obvious that I couldn't juggle um, being an artist, helping other people grow, and doing a nine to five. And so one of those things was going to have to go. And um, after being furloughed and then coming back on, you know, because of the pandemic and like spending all that time on Clubhouse and discovering myself as an artist and the NFTs, you know, it just became very obvious that I was spending more time on the NFTs than work. Um, and it was not going to work. Like either I was going to get fired or have to quit. Um, and I'd rather quit on my own terms instead of be a, a poor employee. Um, so yeah, it took quitting my creative director job at MGM to uh, focus on this full time. And then, you know, uh, one of the things in terms of time management is, Anything that's important to you, 
you set up time, you set up time aside for those things. Like it sounds silly, but like if you say, "Oh, I really want to start drawing with with uh, charcoal," let's say. Well, the only way you're ever gonna have time to start learning how to draw with charcoal is if you put a meeting on your calendar that says from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Tuesday, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn to draw charcoal. You know, with charcoal. And it sounds silly, but you you know, if you really really want to do something, then you make time to do it. And that's you know, my grandmother used to say, if you really wanted to, you would. Right. And and basically everything boils down to priorities. And so if it's really a priority, you'll make time for it, just like you would a meeting for work or, you know, a concert or anything else that you would mark on your calendar. So um, that, that, you know, that's been a, a really good tool for me. Um, but it's all, also I try to do my art during the day and then um, any NFT stuff, usually in the afternoon and evening. So many artists struggle with finding that balance. So I think they'll hear your approach to it and definitely be able to take something away from that. You know, there's been a lot of sentiment, especially over the last 24 hours with like crypto crash and the NFT market is over. And to me, that seems so incredibly short-sighted because at the end of the day, this technology is, you know, not to sound uh, like Thanos, but it's inevitable. And what the blockchain is doing for art and digital artists and opportunity isn't going to be easily erased by the cryptocurrencies that back it fluctuating in value. That's my take on it. But I know for a lot of people, they see ETH dropping and it becomes you know, a very, very scary thing. How do you react as an artist that you, know, you left a good job? being a creative director at MGM, to come into this space full time. When you see such market volatility, what helps you kind of stay focused and keep on your path amidst all the chaos? I don't look at it. <laughs> I, in fact, while you were talking, I just had to look and see what the charts are. Um, yeah, because if, if that's your focus, then you're never going to succeed. Like, you know, but I look at the charts now. They're 22, it's 2283. 23 for all those who are watching and um i was looking at my taxes uh looking at transactions in my wallet uh over the weekend for tax purposes and um i was making transactions within this last tax year at fifteen hundred dollars for eth so um we're still good <laughs> you know what i mean um eth always fluctuates and another thing you need we need to do too is we need to pull back and look at the world around us. Like there's a whole war going on. Like there's people who um, can't get, you know, safe to a safe place to live or or food. And um, there's a lot of other things in the world right now that's happening that is affecting all markets. You know, gas is extremely high, stocks are down. Uh, you know, ETH is down because ETH is a utility token. And if people are worried about where their next meal is, then they're not utilizing ETH the same way they were when everything was good and they had a surplus. And it's the same thing with, with everything else. So, um, you know, we, it's not like ETH is the only thing that's down and everything else is, is up. Right. Um, you know, so I think perspective. Um, another thing is, you know, I've had a job since I was old enough to cut lawns and pull weeds in people's yards. And I was like washing dishes at 13. Like I, I'm, I'm going to work. I'm going to figure out a way to make money. You know what I mean? So I, I don't, I don't worry about that. You know, I focus on my art and then <laughs> when, if there's a day where I can't pay rent, then I'm going to go hustle and figure out how to get a few hundred bucks to cover the difference. You know what I mean? Um, and so I, I don't know if that helps answer your question, but, um, for me, like if, if, I, if all I did was watch the market every single day, um, and panic, then I would never get anything done. I'd never be able to build, I'd never be able to make relationships. I'd never be able to do my own art. And so I just don't focus on it, uh, to be, to be frank. Yeah. I think that that is a amazing viewpoint to have. 
And I think it helps because you need to be focusing on what it is you're building and creating because quality will always win. And by keeping your attention where it needs to be and not worrying about, like you said, you know, within the same year, it was $1,500. Any asset going up 30% in a year is an insane return. You actually have another quote that made me want to ask you this question. And you said, you know, if only the folks at the top are winning, it's not a bull market. So for people to feel like, oh, it's this bear market coming and everything's terrible, it's because a small percentage were having insane gains while most were just trying to get, you know, sales in the low 0.02 to 0.2 ETH range. And so even that disparity is glaring when you look at the market as a whole. But enough on the market talk. I would actually love to talk more about your perspective on uh, cyber crypto voxels. Excuse me, I said cyber voxels. Cyber voxels, crypto voxels, and on cyber. One of the illest experiences I had was shortly after joining your Nifty House Discord, going in and seeing one of the galleries that you had. What made you, or what draws you to metaverse galleries? Yeah, that's a really good question. I I hope I, if you don't mind, I, I'm gonna just backtrack just a little bit because you had mentioned the quote I said about, um, you know, if only people at the top are winning, um, then it's not a bull market. And that was in reference to people that were saying, well, you know, they said it's not a a bear market; it's a blue chip market. And I was like, well, if it's only a blue chip market, um, then it's not a bull market. Um, but also, I firmly believe, and there's a quote, and I'm sure you've all seen the picture on the internet somewhere, but it's like, if it's um, not accessible to the poor, then it's not revolutionary. And so that's one of the things I think we still have to remember is that this space is not completely equitable or accessible for a lot of people. Um, and so until it is, we will like continue to see these crazy fluctuations. Um, so that's something that I also strongly believe in. I just wanted to touch on those two things um, since since it was brought up. Um, but moving on to the metaverse, um, I think just like NFTs, my um, uh, fascination with the metaverse was seeing my artwork in a virtual space, seeing it um, first um, and on cyber when they started offering those free galleries. I put I put one together at that time, mostly of pieces I had collected from other artists. And then um, shortly after, Food Masku had actually got a crypto voxel space and um, he allowed me to build out part of it with my artwork. And seeing like a lot of people in one space, like looking at your art in the metaverse in like a three-dimensional environment it just like it made it real again just like that first nft in your wallet like you might have understood nfts but until you get that first nft in your wallet it's not real and uh, something just like clicks and, and it was the same thing for the metaverse for me seeing my artwork in those spaces and then seeing people kind of moving around as avatars um you know especially we did the finku drop a little over a year ago and um and we had a party and people were all these avatars dancing in the metaverse with our art on the wall and they actually we had uh, voxel wearables of the finkus and people had replaced their like limbs and stuff uh, with you know with our wearables in the thing and it's like you know seeing people wear your art and like it, in live i mean as close to live experiences as possible um it, it just just it just is like eye opening and like it clicked and it it just was really exciting for me and I still think that uh, there's a lot of opportunity in the metaverse. I think what we view as the metaverse is going to change uh, greatly, but um, I still just I just really think that um, there's a lot of benefits um, and accessibility that comes with the metaverse that in real life experiences um, actually don't provide. So I may be off based in my per, um, perception of the space, but to me, the the winner, or I say like the platform that we'll all be using, I don't know if it exists yet. I haven't quite gone to any gallery or participated in anything that made me say like, oh, okay, 
this company or this platform will grow and in the next five years will be one of the things that everyone is using. In your opinion, do you have a clear cut favorite? Is there a gallery that is head and shoulders above the rest that if you wanted to get into this space, this needs to be the gallery that you're starting on because they're likely to still be around? No, I don't think so at all. I think I think that it is way too early. Um, it is way too early for us to get set in our ways. It's something I see a lot. Like people will like poo poo new blockchains like Solana and and um, Cardano and like uh, Tezos and all this stuff. And you know, I think it's way too early. Like to know who is going to win out, and and maybe eventually Polkadot wins out and everything's interoperable you know but um until then like you're it's like you know i i I don't know how many people will get this reference but it's like when blu-ray and hd dvd were like fighting it out you know and then finally blu-ray ended up winning but like these all these blockchains like we we've yet to see like who the who the ultimate winner is and and from what i'm seeing is the trade-offs are very significant, so I don't even think it's going to be, like, one winner. You know, I think there's going to be a lot, you know, you, people are going to use them for their their actual function. So based on what the what you need to use um, is what the blockchain will be on the back end. I don't think the front-end user will even really care as much what the blockchain is that they're on, as long as it has the functionality that they need for what they're trying to do. Um, and so we're not even close to uh, blockchain agnostic systems, you know. So that right there is just a, you know, a, a proof that we're no, there's no winners yet. Um, yeah, obviously people are in some platforms are in better um, position than others. But I think the other thing too is that the tools are becoming like readily available, accessible for people to um, truly be autonomous and have their own platforms and like their own spaces and not be reliant on uh, these other platforms. And so as we see more of that, if a platform is going to want to survive, they're going to have to hyper niche and really offer something special that, um, that they, that as a user, you can't get on your own platform. Um, And so I think that's going to, we're going to see a lot of platforms come and go because they fail to meet like the market demand. Yeah, I am right there with you. But you also just created like a little Mandela effect in my head because I'm like, wait a second, HD DVD, that was a thing? I could have swore it just went from uh, you know regular DVD to Blu-ray. Now I'm going to have to go look that up. The first Xbox, had, it was a Microsoft product, HD DVD, and then... Um, Sony had the Blu-ray, and so Blu-ray is a Sony product. Damn, fe- nah, that's literally blowing my mind right now. And hold on, while we're staying on that, because there's another thing that you said in there, I am not familiar with Polka Dot in the slightest. I know it sounds anything making the chains interoperable. I'm sure is entirely too complex and deserves its own episode. But can you give? you know, a top level overview of what Polkadot is or what it is they're trying to achieve in regards to interoperability? Yeah, so that, that they're essentially trying to be the bridge between all blockchains um, so that they that their main goal is interoperability of all blockchains. So they're just their aim is to actually be the bridge. Um, and their their coding language is the same as Solana, it's Rust. So a lot of the engineers that are working on Solana actually started with Polkadot. Um, so that's that's a little overview of what Polkadot is. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Speaking on blockchains and NFTs, that, that was it's a tough transition, but I want to talk about bags while we're here. Um, and before we get too off, I love the name Badass Gorilla Zombies. Can you talk a little bit about the bags project? The bags that are on the loose, also a great catchphrase. Yeah, absolutely. So um, bags was a a concept that Mr. Brian designed, brought to to us. Um, 
and you know i've i've known mr brian in the space for about six months now well actually seven now but um you know uh i was always impressed with mr brian's um his hustle ability and the way he like is a hard worker and like really just you know puts himself out there and he's not one to give up easily um and also the way he uses art to like break the ice with children and, and he educates children at, on art in English in Japan. Um, and the way he can use art to communicate um, was really powerful to me. So when he came to me with this idea, um, I was already a collector of his Tanuki Bird series. Uh, I have like seven or eight of them, you know, and um, he, you know, he came to me with this idea about bags and he was like, hey, I finally get it. I understand the traits. I understand, you know, the collectible nature of things. And um, he's like, I draw gorillas all the time for my students. Like in Japan, it's a big it's a big thing. Like they love gorillas. Like he's, they work it into like the, the ABC song and everything. And um, he's like, you know, I would love to do a project using gorillas. But with this being, you know, understanding the audience here in nfts like wanting to make it like dj friendly he included like he made them zombies and he included like you know some really fun traits that he knew um you know this audience would like but it was inspired by the gorillas that he draws every day for children and so you know with with our goal at nifty houses these are artist-led projects like these are con you know we're bringing artists in that want are interested in, in the space, but don't have all the tools. And so for, you know, for this, for bags, um, Mr. Brian had the concept, he had the art, um, but he didn't have the, the means for marketing and for um, and generator, generating the, the mint site and like the, the contract and everything. Uh, so we worked with him on that, on producing the storyline, the marketing, like the, the pr presentation of it. Um, and the contract and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, we, we actually just kind of relaunched it because uh, we launched it two weeks ago, right in the middle of the downturn where everyone was panicking. Um, and I don't know that we're out of that yet, but um, we took that time to really dot our, our I's and cross our T's and really uh, button up everything and make it as the best project we possibly could. And we did a relaunch uh, yesterday and, um, you know, we announced some prizes. So like early holders will get a comic sheet uh, drawn by Mr. Brian. And um, there's, you know, different prizes at different stages. And we've really kind of, um, you know, you mentioned the metaverse. We actually have um, a metaverse plot for bags uh, that's kind of like open all the time for people. And then now we also took the Nifty House metaverse plot and split it in half and so half of it will be available for bags holders to use to rent basically um for being a bags holder if they have an event or a gallery show they want to do um they can actually rent that front half of the parcel um for being a bags holder so we really kind of worked out all all kind of new prizes and things that we're going to start um, announcing those, but yeah, uh, the, I guess the short thing is it's a thousand piece hand generated, uh, project, uh, on the Ethereum blockchain at 0 0.05 Ethereum each. And the website is bags.fun. So B A G Z dot F U N. Um, and it's a really fun project. Um, uh, some of my favorite traits are starting to reveal, um, Cyrus James Khan uh, actually, got one uh, the first golden gorilla so really excited about that and uh look forward to seeing more of the traits uh start to show up shout out to the entire nifty house team building in public and just giving a little taste of the powerful or the power that this collective has you know fan this has been incredible getting the chop up with you can't thank you enough for coming on again from the first time I've interacted first times I interacted with you in Twitter spaces. It was just like a true pleasure. I was able to take away so, so much. And the fact that you were able to come on and share some of your experience, what it is that you're working on and your perspective here on money trees. I am eternally grateful. There are two questions that I ask every guest on the show 
before I let them go. My first question is going to be, what is your seed phrase? And how I know in crypto, your seed phrase is normally your account recovery key. I just don't think that it's a scary enough term. So here on Money Trees, we're repurposing seed phrase to be a saying, a quote, a slogan, a lyric, a motto that you live by that embodies your approach to your career, to your art, to your craft. Fen, what is your seed phrase? You have to meet people where they are. That's something that I have kind of preached uh, all last year, <laughs> and I don't say it enough anymore this year, but uh, you have to meet people where they are. You know, we can't just shout from the mountaintop and think people are going to come to us. Um, we can't pretend that there's not barriers between where we are today and where we were when we started in this space. And people are facing those barriers plus any additional um, barriers that they have in their own life. So, um, yeah, meet, meet people where they are. And uh, that means getting out of your comfort zone and not using the same Web3 tools that everyone else is using. Um, but think about who you're actually trying to reach and talk to. Incredibly insightful. You know, you had another like teaser of a seed phrase earlier where – if and um, I'm going to butcher it, but I'm going to listen back and get it. Um, if it's not accessible to the poor, then it's not revolutionary. And I had never heard that, but that really resonated with me. My second question is going to be: We have the one of one money trees number sixty one Fen note that will be listed after this episode up on Zora. What are we? What is the listing price going to be for this NFT? Oh man, I don't I don't like giving price advice. Uh what um this is where I would leave it up to you. I, I don't want uh you know, I want it to be accessible, you know. Um oh, I, I leave it up to the guest. That's my <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the same boat. I'm like, nah, I don't want to figure out the price. Yeah, I'll decide. Uh it's a one of one, right? Yes. I don't know. I don't want to hurt your floor. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, the, the floor is the floor is free. A couple have been given away for free. That's what I'm thinking, right? So, like, no, uh, it can be free. It can be free. I'm not yeah, tripping. Because then, then it just, um, then you know, then it's accessible, and then maybe people will trade it and um, share it. Uh, can, can we put a note like encouraging people to to trade it and like share it uh, and not hodl it? So that the yeah, fin we can kind of, we can do yeah. whatever we want with it. That's like so for me, the notes are a way to celebrate and commemorate the guest appearance. I love that you know it's a money trees. It's an actual currency. It is a you know like the idea of a bill. And I love some artists. Some guests have sent in their NFTs. Some guests have sent in pictures of their face. Some guests have sent in logos. And it's been really, really interesting getting to see all of that. I love just looking at the collection of everyone. To me, that's my value. Some guests have offered to do utility for holders. You know, there's so it's a it's a playground for me. I'm growing this garden and we're exploring what the space is like. Like you said, not getting stuck in any way. I think that utility is a nuanced conversation. And for now, they're just one of ones, they're collectibles. They might have some utility based off who the guest is. They might not. It might be a trading, you know, like whatever whatever we end up making it. So for me, the value is in the conversation and essentially saving it in the internet forever, or at least as long as the Ethereum blockchain survives. We okay. can do it for free. I have an idea. Let's yeah, let's get it for free. Let's put um comment a uh, comment in the description. Let's say that um that they the utility is that they get direct line of contact uh to me through nifty house discord i'll answer any questions they have and um if there are private questions we'll open up a support ticket um and the, the only catch is that after 30 days that utility goes away so they have to transfer it or sell it to someone else oh Look at my guy Fen adding all new concepts to money trees. I am here for it. That is ill. I will put that in the description. Again, Fen, thank you so much for coming on. This has been an episode full of first, and I cannot wait to see what you continue building as an artist 
and as a founder. And yeah, man, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Kufu, this has absolutely been my pleasure. I'm so grateful that you hit me up for this. Um, I'm really glad to talk with you and, and share. Um, it, it means a lot. Um, you know, I think uh, we all can relate to uh, being seen and how important that is. Um, and so, yeah, it, it feels good to be seen and, and in this case heard. Um, so thank you again. And I'm happy to join uh, anytime. This was a delightful conversation. Amazing. Oh, you know, we will have much more to catch up with as our Web3 careers continue. And yeah, Fen, thank you for kicking off the week. Thank you for coming on. Again, I am, as you can hear, probably said 30 thank yous. It has been super ill getting to talk with you. And until next time, man, peace, peace, peace. Peace.